Back now, this is a sensitive, but I think it's an important topic. Have you ever thought of donating your body to science? Well, the Witt School of Anatomical Sciences says doing so helps in the training of medical researchers and healthcare professionals. While methods of teaching human anatomy now include digital application, researchers also say uh, cadavers are still the best teaching uh, tool. So to discuss this, uh, from the Witt's Anatomical Sciences School, lecturer Dr. Brendan Billings, good morning to you and thanks very much for joining us. Before we talk about the, the, the practice and the ethics, is this something that is commonly done or do medical schools battle to find donation? So medical schools are actually battling uh, to find donations. Um, there's a sincere need for donations um, and hence we're trying to create awareness around this and uh, to try to encourage the public um, to donate. What would prevent people from doing so? I think a lot of prevention would be around uh, culture, religion, um, and also misnomers. Uh, people not understanding what we actually do with the cadavers um, would be something that would be a bit of a restriction. Mm. Why would a person then consider such a move? What, what, why would I want to do it? Yeah, because a, a donation uh, leads to saving lives. Basically, you're training your doctors, your uh, health science professionals to um, save lives when they get into their professions. You also want them to have a solid foundation in terms of the education uh, when they get into their later years and uh, Kadapa based mm -hmm. teaching is the best um, tool to do that. If you're battling to do it uh, right now, how is this hindering the teaching of students? So student numbers are increasing substantially um, and if you have limited number of cadavers that means you've got in excess of uh, say about 10 to 15 students per cadaver. Uh, which means that you diminish uh, the amount of uh, education and teaching that they can actually acquire from that cadaver. Mm -hmm. So the more uh, human remains we have available uh, with increasing number of students, um, the better uh, we, we can teach them. All right, so um, you, you have a dead person. The, you, you take delivery of that. Yeah. They first, I read, undergo something called a, a process of, uh, of perfusion. Yes. Um, what is that? So, Jeremy, uh, perfusion is basically just the removal of the blood. Uh, we want to ensure that the students are safe, uh, so that no viruses, pathogens um, um, around. Uh, we then apply a fixative, uh, which is the embalming fluid, um, and that also allows the body to be, um, it prevents decomposition. During so you're doing pretty much, I guess, what an undertaker might be doing. Definitely, our mm. technicians are very much involved mm. in that. Yeah. All right. Then, uh, what happens then? How, how are they laid out and used? So we would then uh, take about four to five months just to make sure uh, that there's no disease uh, with the bodies. Uh, we would then use that body for a year and the students would dissect. Uh, they would basically start uh, in the beginning of the year and dissect right through. Uh, at the end of the year, the donor has a choice to either have the body cremated and the, the ashes returned to the family or they could uh, donate where we could retain the body for an indefinite period of time. Mm. The um, notion of disease, would medical clearance be needed uh, for something like HIV? W would you take an HIV positive um, so, person? Yeah, it's a sensitive question, but uh, we, we would. Uh, you not, uh, there's no obligation to disclose your status. Uh, and we treat every cadaver as if it has HIV in terms mm. of our safety protocol. Um, so it's really just a matter of disclosure. Uh, so when, ahead of our conversation, uh, Doctor, I was talking to people and they said they would do it, yep. but they are concerned about the way in which the body would be treated. treated. Yep. In other words, would people make fun of it? Mm -hmm. um, would uh, you have a bunch of medical students, you know, laughing as they're doing yep. this. Is that a concern? It must be if it's worried uh, someone. Yeah, I mean at the university, uh, Wits University, mm. we take this very seriously mm. within the school. Um, we teach the students. Uh, we have a very high standard in relation to our ethics. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean it's very unlikely that you would mm. find students mm. actually doing this. And if they do, the consequences mm. um, are dire. So it's something that's monitored. Would the students know my name? No. No, this is personal information, it's confidential, and, and this is uh, one of the rules that we stick by. We will not, um, uh, uh, your, yeah, your name would not be disclosed. So to it's a student. classic John Doe that you did. Yeah, sometimes students do uh, name the cadavers mm. themselves. Um, this is just to develop a relationship with the cadaver. This is the first patient that a, a doctor would generally have in relation to the education. And so this does add a humanistic approach to Why it. is that, why do they need to develop a relationship? 
Because you're not dealing with an object, uh, Jeremy. You're dealing with a human being. Um, and, and, I mean, being in that business, uh, you do require a mm. level, a, a humanistic approach mm. to it. What kind of uh, cadavers are you looking for? So we're looking for uh, any cadaver would, would suffice. Uh, we, we're trying to create a bit more diversity in our demographics, um, and this would allow us to have a, a better representation within the dissection walls. So, you know, w whether it's an infant or whether it's, uh, you know, someone who's, who's, who's very, very old, old they yeah. would all serve a very useful purpose. purpose exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I have a loved one and I feel strongly about this. Mm -hmm. Am I in a position to donate that person's body? Yes, we do. We have uh, different types of donations, uh, and that what you're referring to is a next of king type of donation, and we do definitely get next of king donations mm -hmm. as well. Um, so we do allow for that. All right, and if I'm an organ donor? Mm -hmm. So the organ donor is a bit tricky, um, but I'd like to clear this up. If, if you, you can be an organ donor and a body donor. Um, the problem is if your organs are used uh, and there's a recent surgery, we cannot accept the body because there's an open wound mm -hmm. and, and this, this compromises our safety regulation. Um, if your, your organs are not viable at the time of your death for organ donation, then your body could definitely be used for the body donor program. Mm. And just a final question, Doctor. If I have, or if a person has died under suspicious circumstances, yep. so whether it be a car accident, whether it be a murder, yep. something along those lines, would you be precluded from taking that body? Yeah, we would not take that body mm. at all. Uh, by what, law, what, we're not, not allowed yeah. to. The, bo the body would go to the forensic services for an autopsy. Um, and once again, you'd have open wounds, so it's a safety issue. So uh, homicide, suicide, motor vehicle accidents, we, we don't allow that. It, it, by law, we're not allowed to. All right, casting a light on, a, on an uncomfortable subject, but I think it's an important subject. Because it, as you said at the beginning of the conversation, um, it is only going to further the, the pursuit of medical knowledge and excellence. Definitely, mm. which is much needed, um, especially in South Africa. Mm. So I'd like to encourage the public out there to please consider it. I hope we've changed some minds. Dr. Brendan Billings, thank you very much for joining us. Let